Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take a look at this really neat little RC car that I just got in. This is the Banzai Jabatis, the 14016, I think the model number was, though I've also seen it listed as the 141600. But the instruction manual, which I'll show you down here, listed as the BOZ for Banzai 1416. So again, here is the buggy that I just pulled out. I think they have a green version also. Of course, this is red. Looks a lot like the style of the WL Toys A959 series. So this is 114 scale. Those I think were 118 scale, so they're even smaller than this. But it has that same look. Just a neat looking little buggy. So we'll dig in here and take a closer look at that. Um, the controller is also in here. It looks like they, Banggood just shipped this to me sort of just like the box itself just has you know, DHL listed on it. So it's a rather generic box is what I'm saying that the uh, car came in. Um, and the instruction manual just includes this little wrench tool in here and of course your instructions. So we'll take a closer look at the instructions here in a moment. Let's go ahead and dig into the car and then we'll get that controller out and take a look at it too. Now the battery is already inside of here. Um, I have to show you. Actually, I don't have it inside here. I got to go grab it. I took it out to charge it. It does come inside the car whenever you uh, open up the box. Of course, I've already pulled this out. So this isn't a true unboxing per se, but I've not driven it yet. I'm just taking a, cl a close look at it just now. So it's got some pretty nice little um, rubber tires. Um, I like the size of these tires. They look pretty nice. This is a really cool looking buggy. The shocks are just friction shocks. But they feel pretty nice. They look sort of like oil filled, but on the Banggood product listing, they show an actually exploded view of the shocks. I don't think these would hold oil. They probably would leak, but they do look like that type of shock. But um, they're pretty decent. There's a little drop here. Not too bad. I mean, you can usually tell friction shocks are usually really bouncy because there's no oil in there to dampen it. And these are, but I've seen way worse. So I think on this size car, these friction shocks will probably be okay. But of course, an oil-filled set is always going to be an upgrade, and it wouldn't be very expensive to do that. I know this has got full ball bearings in it, and it has a metal differential. So let's go ahead and pull the, uh, the body clips off the car and take a look underneath. Now there is a protective film on this body. Uh, and if you notice it's really shiny, I've already pulled that off. So make sure you do that, otherwise it's just gonna tear as soon as you uh, crash the car, which is gonna happen on any kind of a buggy like this. So here is your brushed 390 size motor. And here is a steering servo here. And this is using the five wire. So if you wanted to upgrade this to say to a brushless kit, you'd have to also upgrade the receiver to a, uh, you know, your own controller and receiver module you then you would need to get a new steering servo because those all use the three wire steering uh, you know servo system so you need to use but you need to upgrade that as well and get in that but this is a receiver esc combo your power button is right here unfortunately the car does use one of these rather odd two pin sort of proprietary plastic connector um Looks sort of like a mini Tamiya connector is what it looks like to me. It's similar in that style. It'll be fine for this car, but it's certainly not the uh, best kind of plug. I'd rather see a Dean's plug in there. But anyway, this uses a two cell lithium ion pack. Let me grab that. I was charging it over here. So I'm going to grab it. I've got it plugged into the charger here. The charger is just a USB charger that charges off that balance plug because obviously this is that goofy, you know, proprietary style connector. This has a red light and it goes green also. There's a red and a green and the, it, the green will come on, the red will stay on with it to let you know when it is fully charged. Let's take a look at that battery. And it's just a lithium ion pack, 1500 milliamp um, battery. So I get a decent run time considering that this is a really small, RC car, but you can certainly go with a lipo because as you see in here, there's room in here. You have to this little arm or little lever, you move it and you get it into the middle here and you pull this up and then you can swing this out. And that is how you put 
the battery in. There's a foam block here. That's so that because this is smaller than the battery bay, this keeps the battery in place and keeps it from sliding around. You actually have to put it in, I think, upside down or in here to get it in place because otherwise the wire wants to hang out the side. But you could pull this block out and you could put a LiPo battery in there. Yeah, you'd, want, you'd want to stick with 2S on a 35 amp. Uh, a 3S probably would fry this. But you could certainly go with a larger capacity and a LiPo would give you a little bit more kick than the lithium ion pack. But the nice thing about lithium ion is they're not nearly as sensitive to their, how they're stored. LiPos need to be stored at storage voltage, which is 3.8, 3.85 volts per cell. Lithium ion packs are not nearly as sensitive to that, so if you leave this fully charged or all the way dead, it's not going to go bad very fast. A lipo pack might swell and can end up going bad. So that's why sometimes they go with these lithium ion packs because they're not as sensitive to that, even though uh, they're not, they don't have quite the, you know, the punch that a lipo pack has. So this is, I mean, again, this looks really nice. It's got metal dog bones in here. Again, it shows metal differential inside. It is four wheel drive. If you turn the front, you can see the rear turns with it. So that means you got front and rear gearboxes with those differentials in each gearbox. Just seems really nicely constructed and it looks really looks great. I mean, really honestly, the only thing I would consider doing is going with the, you know, maybe a brushless kit on this. You need to get a controller and a receiver if you wanted to upgrade this. And then of course you might want to go with some aftermarket oil filled shocks but as is for the price of this buggy uh, this is really really cool and a lot of it should be a lot of fun let's go ahead and pull out the controller that's all that comes in this box so you just get your charger the instruction manual the car and the controller i believe let's go ahead and pull out the, uh, the controller and get it out of here yeah there's nothing else in the box and you get a this is also a WL Toys style controller. Probably the same company makes them. They have that kind of triangular looking controller like this. If I could grab one, I'd show you. Now, it's, they're not identical. The WL Toys has a you know thing on the side. It just has that style. It may not be the same manufacturer. You got your on and off switch here, a bind button, just like the WL Toys. Your steering and your throttle trims right here. And I think that's all the buttons. I don't think there's anything else. And then down here in the bottom, you're going to take uh, four AA batteries. So if I can get the tray back in here, sometimes these these uh, battery covers, I should say, not tray. The battery covers on these controllers sometimes can be a pain to get back in place. And it's of course got your forward and your brake and your reverse and it's got a nice foam grip it has a small wheel i like the size of this wheel it's just nice it's not huge but the foam grip really sticks to your fingers well so that means you're going to get good responsive controls hopefully your fingers aren't going to slip on the dial or anything like that and let's take a quick look at the instruction manual and then we'll go outside for the drive review of this guy so let's Take a look at that. Um, this wrench again is just a little plastic two-way wrench that allows you to quickly remove the nuts off the wheels, mostly to take those off if you make it, need to make a quick repair. And then here is the instruction manual. It shows you it's uh, 114 scales, what that's trying to tell you. Off-road, four-wheel drive, 390 motor, ready to run in 2.4 gigahertz controller, which they all use now. And you can see everything that we we have here it they show lithium ion pack i think on the banggood listing it almost looks like they show a lipo pack or something on there but that's not what you get just giving you some basics on how to use the controller shows that exploded view here again so this is unfortunately it doesn't have any kind of step-by-step -step assembly instructions sometimes cars will include a few pages of that but typically not because it's ready to run. So they usually just give you an explosive view. And this one's, eh, it's just so-so. But this would help you if you needed to reassemble it. You might at least be able to locate the parts. And it also helps you identify parts if you need to look for a replacement. You can see here's the diagram of how you put the shock together. Again, I'm not sure if you could put oil in these or not. You, have to, you could try it out. If you do, maybe just try it in one. And that way, if they all leak out, you don't have a bunch of oil leaking everywhere. 
and they would obviously get very dirty and dust or just oh well, it's like a magnet to dust and dirt and grime you will get caked up disgusting shocks really quick if they're leaking oil so i would just try one if you're going to try it and maybe just pull the shock off and leave it out and just squeeze it a bunch and see if the oil comes down on the rod down there but i think these are probably going to leak all right guys that pretty much should cover everything on the main overview and unboxing and table review portion for the bonsai boz 1416 let's get outside now for that drive review this ought to be fun so i'll be right back okay guys so i'm out my behind my house here i have a little rock lane here that would be a nice spot to do the test run here for the jibatis the bonsai jibatis there's so many different model numbers for this the bonsai 1416 or 141600 or as you can see on the body b416 and of course the jibatis is the name so a lot of different names and for this little car but looks like it's going to be a fun little car so i'm going to take it out here and we'll drive it around the rock and get an idea how it does off-road we would be in that it is all-wheel drive um won't be any top speed tests on this today because even if i wanted to this rock wouldn't be a good place to do that so if i decide to do that i'll come back and do a uh, top speed test on my in front of my house and these are these tires will be nice for on-road they're not super like spiked or anything to where they'll wear off really quickly so let's go ahead and put it down and see how it does and well that's that's a little quicker than i expected you know it's only a 390 brush motor but it moves along pretty good sometimes these little brush motors catch me off guard because they're a little quicker than you expect them to be these lithium ion packs and lipo packs certainly help Compared to the old nickel cadmium packs and that stuff didn't have quite the kick that these lithium ion lipo packs do. There's this little uh, pipe in the rock under here. It's a drainage pipe from this people's, this old farmhouse is behind us. And that makes like a little, nice little ramp there. And you kind of jump that like that. Now this grass here is pretty tall. And it's still going through that grass there. See if I can kind of hit that again. Oh, now I'm gonna get stuck. This doesn't always get mowed back here very well. It's not my property, and this grass can get very, very tall. But I want to try to. It kind of jumps this. If I can keep it in a straight line, now I've not been able to, you know, um, trim the steering too much because of. I need to really get it on the road to do that. Looks like it might be pulling a bit to the right. There we go. It's a little bit of a jump, anyway. But it's got, I mean, it's power to go through some of that. That's pretty tall grass, and it's chewing right through that, so. Yeah. Not real far there, but no range issues. You know, I've had some of these low-end, low, I shouldn't say low-end, low-cost. This is certainly not low-end. Low-end of the price spectrum, I guess you could say. I've had some issues with some cars, you know, have very short range. This one seems fine. This is not far. You shouldn't have range issues there, but you'd be surprised. Sometimes you do. Just try and try to get straight. I'm not going full speed here. Whoa! I hope I caught that. That hit. There are some really deep ruts here in the spring whenever the cement truck and the rock trucks are coming in to put our pool in this was very soft ground on the back of our property here and the truck was made big ruts in the mud and since they've dried out they just kind of these deep ruts and i hit them with my mower and it just about throws me off the mower whoa i cut this bit pretty short back here yesterday for the sole purpose of one of the well not the sole purpose one of the reasons is hopefully i could drive my cars around here better these little cars so they don't get caught up in the dirt and you can still see the I should say the deeper grass clippings but it still happens but the deeper grass tends to oop, bog these things down even the grass clippings i should say too but this is doing real well 
yeah i like this this handles nicely it's seems to be fairly evenly weighted and weight distribution is pretty quick the uh friction shocks are a little bit bouncy as you can see it bouncing some but they're not bad it's not throwing the car over it's not bottoming out really bad that can happen on these friction shocks but i can certainly see where some oil fill would certainly reduce some of that bouncing because it would absorb that impact without immediately bouncing it back up yeah this this would make a nice little car for a beginner now, this is a 1 14th scale so it's not as big as your 1 12th or 1 10th but it's bigger than the a959 which i think those were one pretty sure those were 1 18th scale. i did flip it there so i'm gonna have to go flip it back over there so it will still flip and again some of that is those friction shocks they're going to bounce back and cause the car to be a little bit less stable you'll get better stability with a set of oil filled shocks on this car not that it won't flip over it certainly will it just may be a little bit less prone to flipping over with oil filled shocks yeah this works this is nice this is again i kind of if you're looking at this range and design a model i think i like this size better than the a959s at 118 those are uh so small that they can get topped up on grass and stuff easier um they're just a little bit they're not as ideal for off-road as this 114 scale But those things are little pocket rockets. You know, see people soup those up, and boy, they they can just set some insane speeds when you go brushless on those little guys, and then get all aluminum bodies, and, you know, uh, parts I should say, and chassis, aluminum chassis. This seems pretty well built, so I don't think there's any much reason to do that on this one. And I don't know what aftermarket parts are available. There's probably not very many for this one yet, but. If it comes popular enough there probably will be but you can certainly go brushless on this just get a 390 size brushless you get a pretty cheap brushless kit in here and of course you need to get an aftermarket steering servo and an aftermarket like a dumbo rc something like that for your controller and receiver and you're good to go But this, to me, I mean, this is, wow, nice. This is fine, unbrushed. I don't see, I'm going to get caught in that rut again. I don't see any reason you'd need to go brushless on this unless you're just really, really wanting that top speed. This thing's just fine. Brushed motors are really inexpensive, so yeah, they will burn out eventually. You could easily replace this brushed motor for a few dollars. And at this side, it's still really, really quick. I'm going to trim it up a little bit it seems like it was pulling to the left now but yeah it handles well i mean it's i'm i don't know what else to say i'm impressed by it i mean it's about what i expected it to be i figured it was gonna be pretty good because i'd seen uh, david over at perth west Oz rc i'd seen his video on it he did several weeks i think about three weeks ago he did a video on this one and i knew so i knew ahead of time this car was gonna be pretty good i know at the time this car was under 90 bucks back then. I haven't checked the price again recently, but I know it's rather inexpensive for what you get. So it's a good deal. Again, I would pick this over the A959 just because I like slightly bigger size. But the A959 and 959B, which has the big 540 motor, um, that one's pretty darn quick. And it, uh, looks like that battery's gone dead. So not a real long drive time on this single battery. But the big 959B might be a better option for some people because you get that big 540 motor in there and all the aftermarket parts are just everywhere. eBay, Banggood, everybody can get those. But anyway, 
hopefully if someone will make sense for this, but as I kind of suspected, the drive time on this guy is not going to be the greatest on that little lithium ion pack. So I don't know exactly what that is. I don't typically, in fact, it's been very few times in a five years review that I've had a car actually go dead during the review. I usually just, you know, it's become so repetitious that there's no reason to keep running. But yeah, it depends on how you drive these cars. Obviously, if you're driving them half speed or low speed, you're going to obviously have a longer run time. But this one was not too long. I'm guessing what that probably was somewhere in the 10 minute range, 10 to 12 minutes. I'm just guessing here. So a little bit less than ideal. But again, there's a lot of room in that battery bay. So you can put a larger lithium ion or even more ideally a larger lipo pack in here. Just stick with 2S, 2 cells, what 2S means if you don't know. And you'll need to have one with that connector or splice that connector onto a lipo pack since I would probably, what I would do is cut that connector off that uh, receiver ESC combo and put a Dean's plug on. And then you've got the compatibility with any pack you want. You can get just any battery just about with a Dean's plug on it. A Dean's plug are those T-shaped little connectors that are red if you don't know what I'm, if you're new to RC cars. Most people call those a Dean's plug, some call them a T-connector. So, all right guys, that wraps up the review of the Bonsai V416 or 1416 or 146, 14600, whatever you want to call it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in this car, I'll include a purchase link down in the video description that will link you to Banggood, which sent me this and I kind of send me this out for review. If you're interested in purchasing it, you can use that link. You won't pay a cent more, but if you do choose to use one of my affiliate links, I, of course, get a small kickback, which will help support the channel. So if you want to support the channel, please consider using the purchase link down in the product and the video description. And that should wrap this up, guys. So if you're new to the channel, click that bell. while you're When you click the subscribe button, click the bell as well so you're notified every time I upload a new video, you get notified. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.